Okay, so we're gonna mix a double batch on this. We're gonna mix our medium star and our small star. So what I've done is I've collected the volume in the flask up to between 5 eighths and 3 quarters. That is the minimum volume of water you need to get the correct mix ratio with the plaster. So both of these volumes have been filled to 3 quarters full-ish and then poured into this rubber bowl. Okay. Before you start mixing, you want to make sure you have adequate ventilation. So if you do not, you want to do this outside or get a fan, wear a respirator, dust mask. I'm going to turn the ventilation on and normally I would be wearing a dust mask, but I don't think the audio will carry over through the mask. So I'm just going to make sure to work close to our ventilation, making minimal dust. So. Make sure that your flask is firmly seated with your part in the middle. And then we're going to open up our plaster. And we're going to add until we get an eyelet, okay? And the important part here is there are two methods to do it. One is with the weights and measures and one is with the island technique. And the interesting part is, if anything ever goes wrong in your process, you won't actually know how to fix it if you've never done the island technique. And each plaster is a little different. It's gonna have its own reactivity. It's gonna have its own cure times, its own set times. This one generally runs about 10 minutes. On a humid day, you may find that it actually happens quicker. On a hot day, you'll definitely find that it's quicker. So it's important to make sure that your water is about 70 degrees. People say room temperature, but if it's a hot day out, room temperature can vary, right? So you wanna make sure that it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And you're just trying to get an island of form to the point that it does not recede, okay? And that's the tricky part here. So we have an island forming, right? Just bring that up to the camera. We have our island forming, but you can see that it's receding into the perimeter a little bit. So we can add just a bit more. Like so. And then the trick here is in order to not introduce a bunch of air bubbles that you'll have to vacuum out, you want to use a spatula. And I'll just tap on the side of the bowl and that will get the plaster to slowly submerge. And it shakes the air bubbles out of the rubber bowl. Okay, you wanna mix in a rubber bowl because it's very easy to clean, it's easy to manipulate, and if the plaster hardens, it's very easy to remove the plaster if you go over on your mixture. So at this point, if it's not fully sinking, I'll put my hand into the mixture and that will tell me whether or not I'm thick or thin. This is a very thick mixture, which tells me either the plaster is extremely old or it was humid. So I'm gonna go add a small amount of water. So this mixture is too thick, okay? And we're gonna dilute it back to the correct thickness.
So at this point, we now have a nice uniform thickness. It coats the finger completely. You can't see through. It's still opaque, but it's got some runniness to it and it's not thick like pudding. So you're going for something like a heavy cream, not a whipped cream, not a pancake batter, definitely not a pancake batter, but not 2% milk either. All right, so as you dip your finger in, you wanna look, do I get total coverage? If yes, you're doing good. If no, you may need to add more plaster. And that is how you go from one to the other. Oftentimes when students are learning the process, I come in and I don't know where they're at, and so I have to do the dip test to verify. So, first step here is to take a little bit of water and run it around the perimeter where you're going to vacuum, and then take your bell, place it directly over your plaster, turn it to invest, turn the heat on, and then you wait until there's suction. You're going to vacuum the plaster until it starts to come to a roiling bubble, right? It'll just start rolling. So we're gonna move the tripod just so you can see that. Once it's rolling, you vacuumed it enough, you can turn the machine off, turn it to release, that will evacuate all the pressure, and do not wait to lift the head until you see the head lift on its own from the rubber base. From that point, it's very straightforward. You take your piece, right, and you just gently pour along the edge, trying not to land directly on your part, and you would fill it to about there. Now, because this is a 3D printed part, we are not going to do a secondary vacuum step. So normally what you would do is you would fill it, you would degas it a second time, leaving enough room for air bubbles to come up through the top, but not boil over, so you'd fill it to about there. For our version, we're going to fill it all the way to the top and just set it to cure. Okay. And one final step you can do if you want to degas it. You can just gently tap the sides. I found that's not particularly necessary, but this process should take anywhere between seven and 12 minutes, depending on the investment.